Will Ospreay versus Claudio Castagnoli. If you like watching big, freaky athletes do big, freaky athletic things, have I got a match for you? And hey, I want to say it again. I'm not complaining, mm-hmm. but it is funny that, like, this is a dream match. And we just got it on TV. I think they had, they had announced it, but yes, this also felt like it should have been a much bigger deal. Yeah, this should have been built up as like, my God, Will fucking Osprey and Claudio Castagnoli. Because they are perfect opponents. They really are, actually. They're absolutely perfect. Because Claudio is so goddamn strong, and either he's going to be a great base for whatever you're going to hit, or he's so strong that he will catch you in midair on whatever you try. And, of course, both of the things happened in this match. So Will got to do his awesome flying, and Claudio was a great base, Mm -hmm. and he got to do his awesome flying and then get caught and killed. And they were just fucking perfect together. This match was incredible. Yeah, that's the term I used. That said... Osprey comes out here and has incredible matches every week and just barely wins. It's time for him to just destroy somebody. He needs to be Goldberg, Ariel Goldberg for a while. So, in the end, I could list 7,000 moves and counters, but I will simply tell you that uh, Claudio hit a pop-up powerbomb for a near fall, called for the giant swing, but Osprey turned that into a DDT, hit a tornado splash that got a two-count, but did not do the shocked mania kickout phase. He just retreated to the corner, hit a hidden blade, and won. And yes, the match was incredible. Don't want to undersell that. So the Don Callis family attacks Claudio. Osprey, technically still in this group, is standing back, not taking part. More surprised than anything else. As is Don Callis, for that matter. He claims that he did not tell Hobbs and Fletcher and Takeshita to attack uh, Claudio here. So Moxley comes out to save. And I wrote, well, it's only three on one, so he's going to get killed. But no, uh, Claudio recovered, and the Blackpool Combat Club won this fight two on three. Sent to the DC. Well, hey, that's what baby faces do. That's true, that's true. That's they're true. supposed to. And Osprey was bickering with his crew and stormed off alone. Here is where I wrote, Sunday, it needs to happen. Yes, let's do this. Well, Osprey needs to get out of this DC. I mean, let's be, let's be fair, though. Yes. Him being associated with the Don Cal's family has not hurt him. It's not like he's getting booed, ever. No. I mean, he comes out, and he's just... What he is is a total babyface that the fans see as a total babyface. And I think the fans are savvy enough to know he's not in this group for much longer. So they don't hold it against him. He never gets booed. He's a gigantic... Ba- he's literally the biggest babyface they have on the show. I mean, he's more over than, than anybody. I mean, he's more over than Danielson. I, maybe not Moxley. Moxley was super over. But before Moxie came back, I mean, he was more over than Swerve and Joe and everybody else. He is a gigantic baby face. But he does need to get out of the group and let's get going with whatever they're doing. So that was Rampage. Or excuse me, that was Dynamite. That was an okay show. No, we still had the main event segment. Oh, excuse me. You're right. Oh, and I, and I should real quick, since it is the go-home show, here's the full Dynasty card. You can decide if you want to buy the show. <laughs> Will, I, I would recommend buying it. It would be my... Uh, Will Ospreay versus Brian Anderson should be good. Yeah. <laughs> FTR versus the Bucks in a ladder match. Okada versus Pac uh, for the Continental title. House of Black versus Copeland and Kingston and Briscoe. Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale. Roderick Strong versus Kyle O'Reilly. Hook versus Chris Jericho. Tony Storm versus Thunder Rosa. And in the main event, Samoa Joe versus Swerve Strickland. This could be the greatest in-ring pay-per-view they've ever done. And if not, it'll be in the very, very upper echelon. Yeah. So much would have to go wrong. I mean, there's so many matches that, like, they're impossible to be bad. And if somehow one of them managed, there's still five others that are impossible to be bad. So uh, I would recommend this if you're a fan of professional wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Swerve comes out. He calls out Joe. Bring your sweet tooth ass out here, he says. And I laughed. So Joe comes out with security holding him back. And I can't believe I forgot this part. There's a crew of guys holding Joe back. Eight, nine, ten, twelve guys, whatever it is. Swerve's finish is the swerve stomp, where he jumps on the top rope and stomps you with both feet. So Swerve goes to the top rope, and there's this dozen guys below him. He takes them all out with a stomp. He jumps on the top rope. He steps on guys somehow and falls off there and lands on his feet. He leaped off the post and stomped people... They were standing upright 
on their heads. Basically, yeah. Well, not basically. That's what happened. This was batshit crazy. And then landed on his feet. He had to somehow land on his feet without breaking his legs. Yeah. How no one died here, I don't know. Now, they pulled it off. It looked awesome because Swerve lands in the middle of them and they all scatter. <laughs> so it's like a ripple going away. So Joe Sucker punches him. Starts going after Nana. Swerve attacks from behind and hits the house call. Uh, Joe blocked the Swerve stomp and then my recording ends. I understand Joe laid it out with a muscle buster and that was that. But uh, I will say, this particular crowd is very much into Swerve, but it feels like he is colder now than he was a month ago, and they should have pulled the trigger at Revolution if they were going to. You know, I, I don't want to talk a long time about this because it drives people crazy and me, but <laughs> when are we going to get this overrun thing figured out? <laughs> like, fuck me. My recording cut off again on YouTube TV. And I had to go on YouTube to watch it. And honestly, I haven't been I haven't been mentioning it, everybody, but this happens to me every single week. I have to go on YouTube every single week to see the overrun. And I never, ever have to do that with NXT. Because WWE has contacted the USA Network, and they have told them we are going to go nine minutes over every week, so just give us nine minutes. And you know what? Sometimes they don't go all nine. Sometimes they go six but it still is set for nine. AW to this day, I don't know if Tony just hasn't done it. I don't know what it is, but they never, they never give it the extra time to catch the overrun. Every single solitary week. And I find a way to watch it, but, you know, it, it, uh, it's really fucking irritating. Like, this should not be that hard. Don't tell me it can't be done because NXT does it, okay? Every week. I know it can be done. I don't know who I need to be mad at, but, like, this is somebody's fault, and it pisses me off. That's my speech. We also watched WWE NXT April 16th, 2024. Main event tonight is Trick Williams versus Carmelo Hayes inside an unforgiving steel cage. Hold on, one thing. Mm. This person here says Tony has to communicate to YouTube TV so they know to not cut it off. Brother, this doesn't need to be a game day decision. Go to YouTube TV and say, give us nine extra recording minutes every week, just in case. That's all you have to do. You think fucking Shawn Michaels calls the USA Network every fucking Tuesday and says, you know, tonight we may go nine minutes over. No. He's told them. Every week, leave nine minutes because we're probably going over. That's all you have to do. You don't need to decide the day of. Just have it record nine extra minutes like it does for NXT. If you use it, you use it. And if you don't, you don't. How the fuck is that, like, difficult? It's not. Anyway. Can they hire Shawn Michaels or something to have him do it? Is this contract due? That would be exciting, actually. God. Shawn Michaels and AEW, just even even off camera. This will be exciting. Tony even t said in the, in, the, in the, let me read what he said in the um, press conference today. This has nothing to do with uh, the overrun, but uh, he was doing his, his media call, and he said, uh, the reason for the release of the full pay-per-view schedule for the year, they've already released the whole pay-per-view schedule. Yes. Okay. Was... Uh, an initiative from new hire Kosha Irby. Because, like, he, like, convinced Tony, get this shit out so people can make plans or whatever. Well, I don't know if it needs to be Kosha Irby or Mike Mansuri or Brian fucking Danielson. I don't give a shit. Somebody tell Tony to take 10 minutes to call and tell YouTube TV that every week we're going nine minutes over. So just every week, have it extend nine extra minutes. That's all we have to do. Like, who do I have to fucking talk to? Who is this Kosha Irby? Because he sounds like he's got a clue. Fix it. God help me. Why is it a game day last minute decision every week? I am sweating profusely. It is hot in here. I move from uh, deodorant to anti -per No, anti perspirant to deodorant. No mistake. No, anti perspirant was killing all my shirts. Interesting. Yeah, so I got rid of it. But now I sweat a lot. But at least I don't smell bad. Well, that's good. 
But I'm sweating right now. Very happy about that, but... Well, all right. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.